firefighters over it. What's the dumbest way you've seen someone accidentally start a house fire? In the city of Colorado Springs, the local news did a fluff piece about candle safety near Christmas. After they were done filming, the store owner that they were filming in took the crew out to breakfast. She didn't put out the candles, and burned several shops to the ground. The film crew was there to film her breakdown when they realized what caused the fire. Ro, that's a textbook example of irony. I worked for a restoration company. A family cut a small tree down and tried to stuff it up their fireplace to burn. The flute was so crammed with leaves that smoke started to fill the living room. They tried to pull the tree out and that's when it really caught fire. They tried to pull it out of the house. They got as far as the front door. All of them had two ND third degree burns on their hands arms and a fire destroyed the front room and entryway of their house. The insurance company asked us if we thought it was a case of fraud, and we told them no these people are just really stupid. That is the stupidest thing I've read all day, and I spent an hour in an Ask Reddit thread about the stupidest demands IT workers have gotten earlier. A Roomba knocked a scented candle over and set fire to the rest of the room. The guy said he knew the Roomba did it because he watched the whole thing happen, but didn't do anything because he thought it was funny. I can just imagine the Roomba turning to face the guy and saying something like they'll never believe you. Teenager was charcoal grilling in the attached garage during the winter. When done he decided the best place to dispose of the hot coals was into a cardboard box in front corner of the garage closest to the house. Yeah, it went about as well as you can imagine. Ah he forgot to turn the coals off. A fairly common one, but the response was interesting. Early February, Western PA. Guy's pipes freeze on the coldest day of the year. Minus 8F. He tries to thaw them with a propane torch. Sets the wall on fire. Tries to put the fire out. Fails. Finally calls 911. Fire chief is one stroke two block away. Is on scene in under a minute. Basement is fully involved. Main floor catching. First engine arrives in under 5 minutes. Doors are blocked by fire. Exterior attack only. I'm on an attack line, spraying water into the second floor window. After 40 minutes, another firefighter comes to relieve me. But since I'd been getting back spray, I'm frozen to the ground. He has to pull me loose. Two hours later, we have it knocked down. The insurance adjuster shows up. Assistant. Chief explains what started the fire. Adjuster replies, oh, yeah, we know, it's okay, we insure for stupid, nobody got hurt, family gets a much nicer house out of the deal. My dad was a firefighter, and he once went to a house fire that was started by the old lady who lived there. She liked to burn candles, but didn't like the wax buildup that would form in the cavity, so she would soak up the liquid wax with a napkin. She was doing this when she accidentally brushed a wax soaked napkin up against the flame. She panicked and threw the napkin into the trash. Where all the other wax napkins were, as the trash can exploded into flames she fled the house. But not before she went to her oxygen tanks and flooded the house with pure oxygen. Because she thought that it would smother the fire. The exact worst thing to possibly do. I'm guessing they were not able to save the house after that move. Not a house fire, but really good. Late 1980s. Guy was driving an old, beat up Lincoln. He turned a corner to go up a steep hill, but the road department had recently ground the asphalt down in preparation to repave. A storm sewer manhole cover was sticking up about 4 inches. As he went over it and up the hill, the rear of his car dragged due to the pavement height difference, and the manhole ripped open his fuel tank and sparked off the gas. Guy described it I heard a scraping sound, looked in the mirror, and there was this trail of fire chasing me up the hill, like I was the roadrunner. He pulled into a gravel parking lot and tried to kick a brake in the trail before the fire got there, but it jumped the gap and lit the car. By the time we got there, it was a total loss. He actually thought it was kind of funny. The only real loss was his wife's purse, with her license and credit cards. The car was insured, and they got a pretty nice payout for it. Yeah that is a good one. I can imagine watching that all go down lol. I'm glad everything was okay in the end. This happened this past fall, but a family had a fairy house that was outside, right next to their woodsides house. The fairy house was made out of an old tree, and had a bunch of decorations in it, including incense candles, 
One evening, they decided that they would light the candles for the fairies, which then caught a tree on fire, which then extended into the house. Since it started on the outside, it ran up the side of the house and got into the attic and second floor. The family was home, but in the first floor while this was happening, it wasn't until someone driving on the road saw the smoke and went to alert the family. Luckily, we were able to save the structure, there was a bit of damage to the roof, attic and second floor, but the homeowners are rebuilding those areas. Fairies were displeased I guess. In college a girl in the dorms was making popcorn which, not sure how but somehow, caught fire in the microwave. She didn't want to get into trouble for it so she grabbed the flaming bag of popcorn and threw it into the nearby trash can, then proceeded to cover the fire with paper towels to smother it. She actually thought it would work. It did not work. I came back exhausted after work to find the dorm building surrounded by fire trucks. College students are really something else. My school is a nursing and engineering school, full of the people that will be staffing hospitals and designing the technology of tomorrow. I cannot tell you how many times I was awoken in the middle of the night because one of these beacons of the future got stoned and put a burrito in the microwave with the foil still on it. Based on the stories from relatives, the answer is by allowing 10 years worth of dry lint to accumulate inside the machine until it just bursts into flames. It was not an isolated case was in my local paper, turned out to be my friend's older brother, he tried to smoke out bees in the loft and set fire to the insulation in the loft and burnt the whole house down. Dusts off hands well, we ain't gotta worry about bees no more. My father was a Boston firefighter for 30 plus years, one of his more memorable stories was a foreign family who had ripped up their cast iron bathtub and built an open flame underneath the tub, they used the tub as a giant oil fryer. Naturally this didn't work out very well and the house caught fire. To add to the insanity even more, the family absolutely refused to let my dad and his co-workers in without taking their boots off. Which of course, they couldn't agree to. Just crazy. I was a chef before I was on a volunteer fire department for a bit and this was at a restaurant down the street from my old one. Cooks at this restaurant forgot to plug the drain in the deep fryer. So what happened was they put oil in a fryer which drained immediately, right before lunch, turned on the empty fryer, and that's when the coils caught fire. So not only did they spill 5 gallons of oil, burn a fryer, fill a restaurant with smoke and kill the service day, this was the second time it happened. My uncle is a firefighter, the answer is Christmas trees, they dry out, they become a ticking time bomb. He used to do an annual demonstration where he'd let a Christmas tree dry out for a few months then take it outside and ignite it. The flames would shoot 40 feet in the air and the tree would be gone in a few seconds. It was mightily impressive to behold. And I'm sticking with artificial trees. Firefighter here. One extremely cold night the temperature was minus 11 wind chills 40s. This guy tries starting a fire in his fireplace and couldn't get it started. He decides to use gasoline, dumps one stroke two gallon on the firewood stacked by the door and the other one stroke two onto the wood in the fireplace. As he attempted to light the fire he couldn't get the lighter to work. Now the vapors are really starting to build. He then goes to the kitchen which adjoins the room with the fireplace to use the stove to light some newspaper. As soon as he turned the knob on the stove the igniter lit the gasoline vapors. The living room was instantly on fire. The vapors singed all his hair and got first degree burns on his hands and face. We on the other hand spent the next few hours in the extreme cold. Flash ahead 3 hours, the firewood outside has somehow ignited and we have to go back. The second fire had some time to really grow. Middle of the night, everyone in but no one around. Longest coldest night of my life. All because some fool decided to use gasoline to start a fire indoors. General rule is to never bring gasoline inside, even just because of the fumes. Not a firefighter, but I set my parents bathroom on fire while getting up from the toilet. My mom used to leave pot pourri simmering in a small bowl on the back of the toilet with a candle to heat stew it just below. As I was getting up I somehow knocked the apparatus off the back of the commode. We had carpet floors in that bathroom and that section of the floor caught pretty quickly. The fire then found a seam in the wallpaper, and ignited the glue fairly easily as well. As the flames rose, it caught the roll of toilet paper on the way up the wall which really accelerated things. 
All this took 30 seconds, and I remember being somewhat mesmerized at the path the flames traveled. I also remember that I had flushed the toilet before realizing what had happened. I somehow thought to grab the toilet bowl brush, shove it into the commode to get it wet, and then beat out the flames. The aftermath was surprisingly minimal. The small section of carpet was destroyed, but my parents replaced the carpet everywhere a few years later. The wallpaper wiped clean with some hot water and a rag, and thankfully there was only a little permanent smoke damaged on the ceiling which has seemed to fade over time. Mid 80s, near beginning of my career, young lady finished putting flea spray on her papa when she noticed a tick embedded in its flank. Did ever hear of the tick removal technique in which you blow out a match and touch the hot tip to the tick, thereby causing it to back out of the dog? Yep, dog caught on fire. Little fellow ran under the bed, which also caught fire. Lady grabbed the pup with spray wet hands, and they too caught on fire. Long story short, the house was a mess, but both the lady and the dog fortunately survived with moderate burns. There was also the lady who tried to sanitize her panties in the microwave, but I was off that day. This might be the best one. Family friend decided to make major renovations on their home with no background in construction carpentry. They also didn't bring a professional to ensure that their renovations were up to fire code. Lo and behold an exposed wire sparked a fire in the middle of the night and burned down their entire home. They have 3 kids and are very fortunate they all were able to escape the fire without any injuries. To make matters even worse, they had no house insurance extreme libertarians that don't believe in insurance debt, so they ended up having to rely on a GoFundMe fundraiser, set up by a relative, to recover financially. Last I heard, they were still living in a hotel trying to figure out their next plan of action. This story alone reaffirms my belief that some things are better left to the professionals. Even if you're trying to cut costs, it might be best to pay a little extra to have someone with experience do something for you instead. This avoids terrible situations like this. Libertarians relying on a GoFund. That's amazing. Not a firefighter but happened in my building. In India generally you have small praying place in your house. Like a little version of a temple. You lit dinner. Lamp every day and pray there. In this particular case the family decided to keep this thing on a fucan refrigerator. The denier fell behind the fridge due to wind from the window adjacent to it. The condenser caught fire and literally exploded. The whole floor was on fire. Luckily no one was home. It really was a dumb decision to keep a temple on a fucan fridge. Not a firefighter and it wasn't in a house but on a certain mall here in Monterey, Mexico. We have a freaky plaza, a little mall where all the geeks, gamers and otakus go to, and on the second floor someone was smoking while playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Since he didn't wanted to throw his ashes on the floor and the trash can was too far away from him, he decided to make a paper ashtray. Yeah, that didn't work out well, especially when three of his friends decided to use it too. Should have used a pot of green instead. So, here in Argentina we have El Cadero a la Cruz. AKA cooking a whole lamb with open fire. Well, it just so happens that pines are really flammable. And, if you make an unprotected fire in a floor covered in pine leaves near a blooming pine. 1. Once my neighbor stole 15 propane tanks and decided to make a DIY blowtorch. By neighbor I mean he lived below us. We were giving him our basement. He almost lit the house on fire but then he tripped on something and fell over. The next morning we looked and saw it had burned a little bit but not much. He was also very drunk that day. 2. Once we lived in a basement suite and the people who lived above us were making toast at 2am and they used a fork to get it out but the fork hit something so the toaster caught fire and my mom tried to wake me up but I just pulled my blanket over my head and said I just want to sleep a little more and then my mom said the house could burn down and I was the first one out of my house. My neighbors forgot they had ferrets inside. We grabbed our dog but they didn't grab their ferrets. The fire department came but my neighbors could have put out the fire if they unplugged the toaster and putting baking soda on it. No the poor little ferrets. Someone tried to make a gummy bear lamp like an Ikali to test it really gonna burn. And then, his house was on fire. That episode scarred me for life. Every time I use fire my mind goes there. Not a firefighter but the apt building I stayed in had a pretty good fire. Guy threw a lit cigarette in a coffee can full of butts. 
It was on the far end of the building from us, so my upstairs neighbor and I got to stay. Everyone else had to move. We were dealing with water leaks for almost a year after that. It took them that long to sort out insurance stuff and make repairs. Finally put on a new roof a few weeks before we moved. I hate people that do this. I work in a grocery store and every couple of weeks in the summer, I have to play amateur firefighter because some idiot thought that throwing a lit cigarette into our outdoor ashtray was a good idea. News article I read, one guy had a fish bowl in his garden shed, sunlight was focused through the bowl, through his kitchen window, fwoomph. I've never before thought to try to spell out that sound, and I think you did a really good job. My partner's a firefighter. He said the dumbest one was where a man tried to barbecue in his basement. His reasoning? I don't want to go outside and risk exposure to coronavirus. It would be safer to do it here in the basement. I have been a firefighter for 20 years. The dumbest way I've seen a house fire start was when people squatting in a basement decided that a space heater would be handy in drying their clothes. Then they waited 15 minutes before calling for us trying to put out with a garden hose into the basement on a 5 degree night if they burned down their home in the one next door there was a show in the uk called 999 lifesavers there was one episode where some kids were dicking around with an old oil barrel one tipped oil over himself so he went to dry himself by their campfire they'd started and wait what my neighbors recently burned their house down emptying an ashtray before they went to bed they have since quit smoking. Not a firefighter but this was a very dumb fire. I'm a teacher. One day, in my department's office, someone noticed a smell. They got the rest of us to stand up and go to where they were standing. It smelled like burning plastic to me, so I tried to find the source. All of the science lab cabinets were nearby so I carefully felt each for heat and then unlocked and very slowly opened the doors to check that the problem wasn't there. No lab chemical problems. We finally narrow it down to a spot behind the wall and that's when I realize, electrical fires smell like burning plastic. I call our head custodian right away. He doesn't answer so I call the principal and interrupt his meeting. He tells me he'll get the custodian down there. They come. I say we should call the fire department and get them to check it out. ASAP. School decides this is not necessary. Principal tells off science department for not being careful with their chemicals. What? This is Wednesday, Thursday, smell had faded but then suddenly increases and is worse midday. I call the principal immediately and say, there's an electrical fire. Call the fire department. After about a half hour of deliberation, they decide to call an electrician. He stares at the wall, says he doesn't smell anything, then leaves. Friday. On Fridays, I didn't have a morning class and on that particular day, I decided to take my time and go in late. I get to the school around 10 a.m. About 8 fire trucks there and the whole school evacuated. A teacher runs up to me. Real fire I ask. Yep, in two rooms and we had to evacuate. Let me guess. Room 208 and 210? How do you know? TL. DR. Smelled an electrical fire for two days but my bosses decided not to call the fire department until the school was actually on fire. Your principal's a fucking dumbass. My father lived in a rented apartment. The landlord lived in the apartment beneath him. My father had switched the fuse off the oven off because he had done some electrical work. He also put some receipts on the oven. In the meantime, the landlord saw the flipped off fuse located on the basement and flipped it on. We wondered why it smelled burned and we discovered that the oven was on and had burned the paper to ash. Amazingle, it did not really burn. The paper just hung to ash. You could even still read some words, but if you touched it, it just turned to dust. I'm guessing the oven was set to something lower than 451 Fahrenheit. Not a firefighter, but I was living in a big old single family home that had been converted into 6 apartments. Because it was a house, it had a shingle roof. The owner hired one of those unlicensed, uninsured type outfits to work on the roof. The kind you find hanging out at Home Depot in the morning looking for jobs. Anyways long story short the guy was on the roof, smoking, and somehow caught it on fire. Rather than dialing 911, he ran down three flights of fire escape, got the garden hose, and ran it back up. Once he got to the top, he realized he never turned it on, 
so he ran back down, turned it on, and ran back up. Apparently by that time it was out of control, so he headed off. One of the neighbors finally called 911 but by then it was a full on blaze, destroyed the top 2 floors and most of the first floor. Moral of the story is, just call the professionals. Probably too late for this to get traction but by far the dumbest is people smoking while on medical oxygen. Like the tanks are coated in labels about how flammable it is. My dad said that one time there was a small fire because a homeless man tried to use a microwave that he installed himself underneath the pier, and it exploded. Apparently it worked the first few times he used it though. Two kids playing in their backyard and decided to light the shed on fire then it spread to their two cars and their house, all burnt down. A firefighter started a fire at his ex's house to win her back by saving her claiming he was just driving by and saw it. Kid lit curtain on fire on second floor. Apartment building almost caught fire because someone decided they could grill on the second floor of an apartment building right next to the siding. More kids being dumb and lighting their houses on fire somehow. At the time my dad was assistant chief of the volunteer fire department, eventually moved up to chief. Before you scoff they were actually very well funded and had some amazing equipment. Thanks to a local glass fiber optics corporation. My mother started a fire in the dryer from not cleaning out the lint trap. It was a minor fire, but a fire at the assistant chief's house. First responders for miles showed up. Cops, EMTs, firefighters, and they gave my dad crap for years about it. It was even mentioned at his funeral service. Good times. A guy had a bunch of ants coming through his wall. He started burning them with a butane torch and it ended really badly. He thought it'd be okay because the exterior wall was concrete. Yes some people are that stupid. Most of the fires I've seen have been stopped by the usual stupid. Unattended candles. Smoking in bed. Smoking on drugs and passing out. Unattended kitchens. Etc. The weirded one I've been to was a porch fire caused by sunlight refracting through a glass hummingbird feeder. The ones we can never get to on time are kitchen grease fires doused with water. Those people are lucky to get out of the house at all. Not a firefighter, but our next door neighbors built a brand new house and moved in. The last item to finish was stain the deck. After the painters were done with the first day, they took all the stained rags, stuffed them into a plastic bag and left them next to the house. Sometime after midnight the rags self combusted, caught fire and burned the house down. I'm not a firefighter. And technically it didn't start a house fire, but, an ex-friend. Hopefully you understand why it's an ex-friend after reading this, once wanted to find out what happened if you put paper into a fryer full of oil. I don't know why, both, why he wanted to, and why I was friends with him, but he wouldn't listen. He waited for it to heat up, dropped a few drops of water in to make it spit like an angry dragon. Then when he was satisfied it was hot enough to melt the paper, he dipped in a sheet of A4. It caught fire, obviously. If I wasn't there it would have ended so badly, but luckily I knew what to do. Grabbed a towel, ran it under the water and then suffocated the flames. He wanted to throw his drink on it, and it was right then that I knew I should not spend another minute with this guy. Scorch marks up the wall, smoke filled the apartment, and I just walked out. That was the last time we spoke, almost 15 years ago. My junior year of college my roommate almost started our house on fire by smoking weed, dumping the ashes in an empty can, throwing it in a paper grocery bag he used as garbage bag next to his bed, then promptly leaving the house. Thank god I was home and started smelling smoke, getting stronger. I searched the whole house trying to figure out where it was coming from. Every room except his room at first because his door was closed. I called 911. And while I was on the phone with them, I opened his bedroom door and it was entirely filled with smoke but no visible flame. I searched the room while holding my breath and eyes burning from smoke and found the smoldering paper bag. I took it out to the front porch and sprayed with a garden hose to extinguish. Lucky I was home and I caught it when I did because if his bed caught the whole house would have gone up. No real damage done. Fire depth still came sirens blaring. And a cop. To whom I stupidly admitted my roommate was smoking pot. What happened here me? My roommate was smoking and threw the ashes in a paper garbage bag. Him, smoking cigarettes me. Silence. Him, pot me. Silent head nod. 
he just threw his hands in the air disgusted at the stupidity and left. Worst part was I was living in a house handed down in my family for decades. A family member of mine was listening to the fire scanner for fun, heard the address on the radio, and called the rest of my family saying there was a fire. Got a whole bunch of panicked phone calls. Oh and my live and girlfriend's parents were visiting the house that morning too. They weren't super excited about it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.